Welcome to the Behavior Groups Podcast. My name is Kurt Nelson. And I'm Tim Houlihan. In this episode, Kurt and I are going to zip through five tips on how to maintain civil discourse at the dining table during large family gatherings. It can't be done, Tim. Just be a believer. It can't be done. Just be a believer. It's not. Oh, oh, you make me so angry. (laughs) Well, in North America and in Liberia, we're approaching the Thanksgiving holiday where families come together to show gratitude for a successful harvest, and that means dinner table conversation. Liberia? I didn't know they celebrated Thanksgiving in Liberia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, it's celebrated on the first Thursday of November in Liberia, though. Wow. Yeah. So... The things you learn listening to behavioral grooves. <laughs> My gosh. You know what? I think maybe even in Liberia, families may have some conflict over Thanksgiving. Families aren't homogenous groups of automatons in America or anywhere else. People choose different paths for their political or religious beliefs, and what I believe can be difficult for you if you don't share those beliefs. In short, we are different and different is good. And in simple terms, we need both conservative and progressive or liberal perspectives. Without a conservative perspective, we would fail to honor longstanding institutions. Without a liberal perspective, we would fail to move past our comfort zones. So we need both, and we need to be able to talk about them and to have a civil discourse over Thanksgiving dinner. That means you and me right now, okay? Oh my God. God, you're so difficult in these types of things, though. Okay, let's get started. Let's begin with curiosity. Be curious, right? Okay. Okay? That's, that's got to be the first thing. So that's tip number one. So what does that mean? What does be curious mean well, when you're at a Thanksgiving table? It means not shutting down, right? It means not having that moment of when that crazy uncle that's passing the gravy boat that you know is crazy and has been crazy his whole life, and then he says something that you're sure is crazy. Don't just shut it down as crazy. Go, okay, just be curious for a minute. So, uncle, tell me more about what you mean by that. Where did you get that that information? Help me understand why you believe that. Be curious. Okay, all right. So... Curiosity is good. Curiosity doesn't kill the cat in this instance. No, I'd rather not talk about killing anything right now, <laughs> other than bad ideas. But turkeys? <laughs> yeah, the turkey's dead. All right, yeah, all yeah, right, yeah. All that, right. That's the case. But you know, there's this great. Um, there's some really great research done by Robert Maurer. Okay. Uh, and uh, and he's done some work on curiosity, and and he talks about how important it is for us to be curious, and how that curiosity opens us up to new perspectives. Right. And I think that's a really important lesson to take into Thanksgiving dinner is go in with an open mind, go in with this idea that, yeah, there may be a crazy uncle in your family or aunt or brother or father, mother, son, daughter, whatever that would be. That's right. But maybe they're not so crazy. And maybe if you just were a little bit curious as to why they think that, uh, you might have a better one. So let's go on to... What's tip number two? All right. Tip number two. So focus on the topic and not on the person. So that crazy uncle, when you're having that conversation that gets your blood boiling a little bit, don't attack the person and say, crazy uncle... But that You're is, crazy. But that is my, that is my natural inclination. Is, I know. Is, <laughs> Go and focus in on the topic area. So if that crazy uncle is talking about how Martians are controlling our brain waves and all of those other things, ask where did he get that information? Let's talk about how come that information is wrong and not the craziness of the uncle, him or herself. So, okay, so it's hard though, right? It's hard to just focus on the, the topic, right, and not the person, not the person delivering it, right? So, so how can I, when the crazy uncle says something, what can, what can I do then to not be responding in this, okay, you're the crazy uncle and I'm just going to shut you down? And I haven't really heard what you said. Right. And I think there's a 
It is difficult. It is really difficult. And we talk um, oftentimes about system one thinking and system two thinking, and our immediate response is this primal response of, system no, one. right, yeah. come on, automatic. We need to take a moment, and like we talked about when we were talking about waiting, right? Maybe, maybe there's a moment or two to reflect upon what he's saying or she's saying. Take that deep breath. Use some meditation principles that we <laughs> okay. are doing here. Okay. But it's hard. But going into Thanksgiving or Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever, whatever the holiday, holiday is, that yeah. you're gathering with people that may have very different views, maybe go in with a if-then statement. If my uncle says something crazy then I will take a deep breath before I respond, and I will respond to the topic, not the person. All right. Cool. Let's move on to uh, number three. Tip number three, I think that would be f argue the facts and not the perceptions. All right. So what does that mean? Well, you know, we, we, we come to these beliefs, right? We come to these beliefs, these things that we hold true, and we, we, we just think about them as... Well, because I think this, it must be completely true. And it might actually be a perception. It might not actually be a fact. Okay. Right? You know, uh, going back to when we talked with Annie Duke and Annie Duke thinking in bets and taking that, that exactly. element of saying, how sure am I on this? In other words, am I 80% sure? Am I 90% sure? Am I only really 65% sure? So thinking through that component uh, and understanding that, hey, all right, let's look at the facts and what we can do and how sure am I of those facts? Our perceptions have changed over the years, right? And, and just Mine have not. My perceptions are exactly <laughs> the same as they were when I was 21 years old. So it's only been a year, and, and you still have more to grow. <laughs> so, but so if we go back, if we go back to the 14th century, right? Everyone's perception was that the sun revolved around the Earth, right? Okay. And then we get a fact. Then we actually discover there's a fact that says no, actually, the Earth revolves around the sun. So there were still lots of people for a long time that held the belief incorrectly while the facts were still there. So the, the important thing is to try to discover the facts, argue the facts, focus on the facts, and not just our beliefs or perceptions so, that may or may not be correct. So how do we argue the facts when there are alternative facts going around today and your facts might not agree with my facts? And oh, wow. when we look at that, I, I go back actually to well before our whole political conversation that's going on today. You say, obviously, this, this, is, this conversation is taking place in, in, uh, in the United States in, in 2018, in 2018. Un under, the, under the Trump administration. But I go back, actually, all the way to when I was in high school. And I was part of a debate in high school. Yeah. And the debate was around nuclear arms and various different things. And so I went out and researched all of this stuff. And my opponents, we were on teams, the opponents researched all this stuff. And when we came to the actual debate, they had a set of facts, and I had a set of facts, and they were very different. So how do we come to a consensus around which facts are actually facts? That's a really good question, Kurt. <laughs> Thanks for asking that. <laughs> well, I think that's one of the hard parts about this. It is this. hard. And, so, and sometimes, I, you know, over Thanksgiving table, you may not be able to come to that conclusion of which facts are more correct. But I think maybe there's a component of saying, all right, so, so when we do find the, the right facts, we, we may not solve it tonight, yeah. may not solve it over this dinner, but maybe we should be looking at other sources beyond Fox News on one side and MSNBC on the other, and maybe we need to actually look to see if there's common ground in between. Well said. Okay, All right. what's the fourth tip? So I am going to think about 
recommend that we talk in percentages and avoid black and white statements. We talked about this a little bit already. No, oh, this kind of goes back to some degree to Annie Duke's thinking in bets, right? It does. It goes okay. definitely back on onto that. And I think it is really important to think about this from the perspective of if I hold a truth to be black and white, that this is the way things are. Which is easier for our brains to process. We love, we crave certainty. Yes. I think then if you disagree with that, you're disagreeing with something about me as a person. If I look at something and say, I'm 95% sure of this, which is pretty close to 100% sure. But I might even be 99% sure. Well, but even at 95%, that says that five out of 100 times on this topic, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And whatever information you give me then, as Annie talks about in, in the book and, and in our conversation, helps me maybe readjust my, my perception maybe I'm only really 90% confident now, or maybe I actually go up to a little bit more in that confidence level, but it no longer becomes this gut-wrenching knife in my stomach because you're now saying that me as my self-identity is being, is being you know, questioned. It is a component where I am now just being able to have better information to look at my perception and my idea of things. And so if we come into Thanksgiving dinner with this idea of saying, hey, I'm 98% sure of this, even if it's just that little bit, I think that can help. It also reminds me a little bit of Cal Turnbull's comments, you know, when he talked about his grandfather's beautiful wisdom about we start with a position and we end with a position but hopefully in between, we're going to have facts and information that are going to make, that are going to inform the latter position to be better, to be smarter, to be more informed. Right. And, and that's where we want to go. Yes. Regardless of, of our, uh, regardless of what the position is, let's make the latter, the second position more informed, smarter, better, hopefully. Love that. Yeah. All right. So our last, our last, uh, Tip. Our last tip, tip number five, respect our differences, mm. right? We're going to have differences. It's okay, right? We're human. Yeah. Human people are not robotic automatons that are all programmed exactly the same way. Our brains are wired differently. We have yeah. very different ways of looking at our world, which actually provides a good way of thinking about that crazy uncle. I think there was a, a, this uh, study by Emily Labor Warren about how, uh, how they went into dorm rooms okay. and could actually identify whether or not the students were more liberal or progressive or more conservative by how neat the room was, <laughs> basically. <laughs> like, you know... Well, the, it goes... It goes back to, to um, you know, Jonathan Haidt's work, right? Where he's talking about the moral foundations and, yes. and where, where um, liberal, more liberal-minded people are, are very concerned about, you know, two of the six moral foundations, fairness and... Safety and... Safety and fairness, I believe, yeah. are the two. And forgive us, we'll, you know, go back and check that. Whereas conservatives have a broader scale. Not that liberals aren't... a you know, uh, concerned about some of the other moral foundations that Jonathan mm -hmm. brings up, but we're just more, we, as I'm saying here, you get my, my leaning, uh, put more emphasis on that. And we put difference emphasis. It's more on, on equity versus fairness of process and various different pieces. That's and right. So, fair, fair, well, fairness of, or fairness of process versus fairness of outcome. Yes. Or, or, or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think there is this component of having that, mindset going into your Thanksgiving dinner to say, all right, let's take a look at this. And they're actually viewing the world through a different lens. And so maybe it would be good if I was able to understand that lens a little bit more. And they're different. We're all different. And that's okay. Were we talking about a specific 
crazy uncle here, or was this really just an imagination thing? Well, I had lots of crazy uncles, but they were fun crazy uncles, not, <laughs> not, not the crazy, crazy uncles. So I had a mix of, of everything. Yeah. So the one thing I do want to just uh, point out, too, is, is let's, this is tip, extra tip. All right. A bonus. A bonus tip. Okay. Think about what you want to achieve as you're going into Thanksgiving dinner. Do you really want to change your crazy uncle's mind and their viewpoint and turn them from being ultra liberal into your conservative buddy or vice versa? What is it that you want to have as an outcome? And I think for most people, it if you go in with the outcome of learning a little bit more, being curious. About their position. About right? their position. Yeah. And thinking about this as a way to understand your own perception and your own position better, you're going to have a much better time than trying to convince crazy aunt or crazy. And we're saying crazy, and we probably shouldn't. I mean, this is just people who are yes, different yes. than us. Yes, exactly. They aren't crazy. Um, yeah, we don't need to be pejorative about it. In fact, if we thought of it in the reverse of imagine going in and believing that this uncle or aunt is coming in with the sole purpose of convincing us, convincing me of their position, I, what would I do? I would, in, I would instantly resist. Right. I would become resistant instantly to that conversation and want to block out anything that they had to say. Right. So that doesn't seem like there's going to be a high payback. There's not going to be a strong ROI on going into a conversation with my purpose is to convince you or to persuade you. Good. And so with that, Thank you for listening. Hopefully this will be helpful for you going into your holiday time frame. And uh, if you like this, you know, give us a big turkey on the uh, on your podcast review. Uh, turkeys being happy and positive things. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's what those <laughs> yeah. are. Not the big turkey. Anyway, have a very happy Thanksgiving if you are in North America or Liberia. Uh, and have a happy holiday season if you are anywhere else in the world for whatever holiday that you celebrate.